Are you interested in learning how construction projects come together? Well, 30 of my VIP students are getting a tour of our recent eight unit new build right here in Toronto. I'm taking them around the building, answering any questions they have about what's going on with this project and all of our future projects. Check it out. Welcome, thank you guys all for, for coming here. Um, obviously this is our project at, uh, at Dufferin Street. We kind of thought we'd capture some questions that you guys might have throughout the, throughout the process. We got this property, uh, I believe it was spring of 2022. And we picked up this project, it was already building permit approved. So we bought it from somebody else and they had gone through all the process of getting it, the zoning uh, you know, approved and changed and everything like that. This didn't actually have to go through a zoning change because this these lots in Toronto are actually zoned for multifamily buildings, but it did have to go through a minor variance process. So they had to, you know, like obviously you notice there's no parking here. So we picked up the project basically when it was ready to start construction. So the first thing that we did was basically tore the building down and, uh, and then we started to, to put it back together. I don't know if you guys have been following me on this project, but we did have some like pretty major issues on it. One of the biggest ones being the very first contractor that we hired basically, um, was paid a deposit and then also given some money for materials. Uh, not an insignificant amount of money actually. Um, and then they basically walked off the job. And so now we're pursuing them through the legal channels, basically through a lawsuit. But, um, you know, ultimately we had to kind of like pick up the project and kind of keep it moving. We had hired them to basically do a, a full service. Uh, you know, it was a turnkey price basically saying, okay, for this much money, you're gonna take care of the whole project. Well, when they walked away, we basically had to take it over. And so the way that it's working right now is my company, the, the property, the, the company that owns this project is now technically the general contractor. And we have a construction management company that works with us here. So the construction management company basically is organizing all of the, the trades, uh, all of the contracts, all of those kinds of things. And I'm basically approving Yes, uh, you know, I'll work with this trade, I'll work with this trade. Uh, we get complete transparency in that format. So I see every single price that we get from our trades. And I basically get recommendations from the construction manager to say, hey, I, I think we should go with these guys based on the price and based on the relationship that we have with them or we've worked with them before. So that's kind of like how the, the project works. I, I act as the, the GC, if you will. I'm the owner representative. Uh, I make all the decisions in relation to the project. And uh, some of our investors are here today. So basically I'm making all those decisions on behalf of the investors. And the idea is that, you know, we're just moving this project along as quickly as we possibly can to get it finished, get it occupied, and then get it generating revenue. So we had about a, I think a four month delay where nothing happened on this site. Um, and so we had to fix a few of the things that had happened while the site was basically abandoned. Uh, we had some issues in the basement. Uh, we're not gonna go down to the basement today because um, we don't have a staircase down there. Um, but basically there were some issues with uh, when the foundations sit exposed for that long, there, there can be some issues. They weren't major, but uh, we did need to fix up a couple things. But now the project's uh, on track and we're kind of, as you can see, rolling. Uh, we're almost finished framing. We're to the point where uh, you'll see on the top floor when we get up there, mm -hmm. about half of the roof is on and the other half will get finished before the end of uh, before the end of this week and then we'll get the roof on then we'll be technically watertight from above and then we'll start doing all the rough-ins so we'll start doing all the plumbing and electrical and all that stuff all of those trades have been signed on uh, we've got all the pricing um, and we're basically in a position now where we can really start to tighten the timelines and we're hoping to be occupying this building by the end of january so that's kind of the the timeline uh, just to give you a bit of a rundown, each floor has two units. So the basement will have two units, main floor, second floor, third floor. So this is the eight unit building essentially. Um, and we'll have, uh, you can see the layouts kind of. Uh, this one is an accessible unit. So um, this is only a one bedroom, but everything else in this building is, uh, uh, sorry, there's, well, there's one more one bedroom on the top floor, but everything else is two bedrooms. So there's six two bedroom units and then two one bedroom units. But we're in the process of potentially changing this to a two bedroom unit as well. Uh, you'll see that it's pretty much the same layout as the unit above and we have two bedrooms up there. So that's kind of an overview of, of the project. And, and then, you know, I'll kind of answer any questions you guys have from there. 
This was on the market. This was on the MLS. Oh, really? Yeah, they wanted way too much money. I think they started at over $3 million. And I looked at it and I was like, yeah, good luck, have fun. Like they thought they were gonna have this, people lining up to buy this project. But the problem with that is anyone that knows construction knows what it costs to build these kind of projects, right? And that's who you're really looking for. You're looking for somebody that's gonna come in and build it, right? But builders know what it costs and they looked at it and said, it doesn't make any sense at those numbers. Right now that the environment has changed a little bit with MLI select financing and some of the other things that are happening, it's more beneficial, but it still has to make sense. The, the numbers still have to work. The reason I like this location, obviously it is very close to transit. I'd be a little concerned with a project of this size and scope without any parking because, because it's so close to transit, that's not really an issue. This neighborhood specifically is going through uh, large gentrification, and obviously that will really help our property values here. But we look for this specific kind of uh, property in our portfolio, basically these eight, uh, eight, nine, ten unit buildings that are on you know lots like this uh, that we can basically kind of turn them and burn them because they don't have to require going through a lot of uh, approval processes. This zone is called the R zone. And the R zone is pretty typical in almost any downtown location. And the R zone in Toronto allows for anything from a single family dwelling all the way up to an apartment unit. So when it comes to zoning, it is actually zoned for an apartment building. So that's not a problem. What you will run into problems on is things like gross floor area, which means how much square footage can you have in a building, uh, setbacks from your neighboring property, from the street, from the back, um, height, uh, we're under 10 meters, so that's, that's fine. But they would have to go through what's called a minor variance application, not a zoning change. So a minor variance application in the city of Toronto takes about three to four months, if all goes well. Um, a zoning change can take you 24 to 36 months. So it's a very different process. So this project didn't have to go through a zoning change, it just had to go through a minor variance. And when a minor variance comes up, all your neighbors get notified, um, and lots of them show up on your meeting and tell you they don't want your development in their neighborhood uh, for various reasons, but that's just part of the, the process. But the city of Toronto, like many other municipalities in our country right now because of our crazy housing crisis that we're experiencing, their mandate is to approve projects that are purpose-built rentals, right? As long as it's not crazy and out of the, out of the norm, like this isn't really that different than the neighboring properties. It's still three stories. It's probably got a little bit bigger footprint, but it's not eight story, something like that. They would have a problem with that. But if it's a minor variance um, and they can add eight more units to the rental market, the mandate is they should be approving those kinds of projects. This uh, the house was here before yeah. you bought it. Was it always a single family home or had it ever been broken up into apartments? The house that used to be here, I have a feeling was a multi-unit, probably an illegal multi-unit, but I never honestly stepped foot inside of it. It was boarded up when we bought it. Uh, the, zone, the, the whole thing was fenced off. And the first thing we did was we tore down the old building. So I never even really saw what the existing building was. Toronto zoning is, was good before, it's even better now. Who's going to take over uh, uh, renting these units? Uh, we will use a leasing company. So like we'll use a realtor. Um, to lease up the units, um, and then management we do in-house. So because we have uh, three other buildings in Toronto right now, we have someone dedicated on our team that deals with property management. And I have a full-time maintenance person that goes around to all the properties and does snow removal, landscape, um, garbage, all that other kind of stuff. So what's your plan after you complete this project? I'm going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, after, after this project, uh, you know, we, this is now, I think, our model. Um, I, I really like this like eight to 10 unit um, building in, in Toronto. I think it's actually, you can do them quickly now with all of the, the, the red tape that's being pulled away from that. Um, the next move that I'd like to make, and I won't tell the construction managers this, but I would like to have my own crew. So I would like to employ people on a crew versus hiring people um, out, you know, essentially, which would reduce our costs significantly, which would allow us to scale the business and just keep doing these kinds of projects, but have our own in-house crew and employees of my company 
versus subbing that work out to somebody else. But the plan is to keep doing other projects like this. The numbers make sense um, on them. Um, I also have an MFT now, which is called a, uh, it's a mutual fund trust. So now I can use registered funds for people that want to invest in our projects. So that really helps a lot. So the idea is to just keep adding more of these eight and 10 unit projects in the city of Toronto. We have another one starting construction in, uh, in about uh, two months. If you're considering adding a garden suite, I would highly suggest that you rough it in like at this stage, right? So it's really easy for them to drill a, um, a four inch, five inch hole through your foundation, um, run a sewer and water line, bury it, and then you can always connect to it later on. But then you don't have to dig everything up in the house and everything. So that's what we're doing now. We're about to rough in um, the units and you can actually see the space now. Actually, it's not a bad thing to look at is you can come out here, you can walk out here, it's fine. That's where there's gonna be two sheds over there. And then this area would be where we would uh, potentially do the garden suite. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're interested in learning how you can be a part of a development project like this, check out my website, darrenboros.com for information about my upcoming courses and everything to do with the development. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.